So I welcome back for this uh, one week online short term course on emerging trends and technical developments in automated machines. Now we are in day four and uh, session three. So now this session is on uh, metal additive manufacturing processes. This will be taken by Dr. G.S. Redigaru. So before start of the session, let me introduce the speaker to you all. Dr. J.S. Redigaru uh, uh, completed his B.Tech from uh, REC Warangal. Now it is known as NIT Warangal. And uh, he completed his uh, M.Tech from uh, IIT Kanpur. And he did his Ph.D. from IIT Varanasi. And after that, Sir did, uh, Sir did his uh, postdoctoral uh, ship in um, Applied Mechanics from uh, Virginia Tech, Plexburg, USA and postdoctoral fellowship from uh, University of Cincinnati, Ohio, USA. Uh, he worked as a scientist at uh, TRDO, uh, in, in fact, uh, DMRL, DMRL, Hyderabad for 20 years, and even worked as a scientist at uh, Iron Bond, Ohio, USA for one year. And he worked as a scientist at uh, MHI, Ohio, USA for 12 years. And uh, he worked as a visiting professor at uh, NIT Warangal for three years, and currently he is working as a professor in Srinidhi Institute of Science and Technology, Hyderabad. On his cap, he has uh, more than 50 uh, publications and 11 US patents. He worked as a principal investigator for uh, four US research projects. In, uh, on those four, two US National Science Foundation and two U.S. Department of Energy projects. He is now completing a DRDO-sponsored research project of what 47.13 lakh. So he is a well-known researcher and very good teacher and a uh, human being in all uh, put together. So I'm so glad to hear from uh, Dr. J. S. Redigaru. Sir, now you can uh, start your presentation. Sir. Okay. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jaikiran, for the introduction. And also, I would also like to thank uh, the NIT and the CNED organizers for having me for the session. Okay. okay, the topic given to me was metal additive manufacturing processes. Actually, many speakers also touched upon this particular subject, but I would like to <clears throat> present the things which were not really covered. So let me go ahead. We, it, we have got compulsion to start with the, this industry 4.0 actually. So let us see the industry 1.0 basically started in 1760. Mechanization and introduction of steam power was the important thing at that point of time. And the industry 2.0 March 1870. 1870. At that time, it was mass production assembly lines using electric power for the important events. And Industry 3.0 was at the time of 1969. Automated production, computers, information technology, systems, and robotics were the important events at that point of time. Industry 4.0, that is today, the smart factory, autonomous systems, I, <coughs> sorry, IoT, machine learning, and so on and so forth. So why I'm telling these things, because so many people have been talking this for so many years, actually. But the additive manufacturing is already placed into this industry 4.0. So that's what we we'll have to recognize. See, this is the industry 4.0. This is the framework the digital technologies. So if you see right at the bottom, 3D printing that additive manufacturing is already listed. In addition to that, augmented reality, cloud computing, location, detection, inter internet of things, spot sensor, advanced robotics, big data analytics, and so on and so forth. So we are talking about that additive manufacturing, which is already into the industry 4.2 framework. So here, 
again, other part, partnership is also there. Like uh, most of the things what we discussed are there, except authentication and uh, fraud detection, advanced human machine interfaces, and uh, big data analytics. I think it's smart sensors. Eh? So this is associated with the industry 4.0 with the AM. AM means ready to manufacturing. So this is an important slide that I would like to uh, emphasize. Here, the additive manufacturing and the global goals, like uh, A to H are there. The A is the clear strategy and uh, stakeholder collaboration. And B is the workers, H and S, training education, clean production and pollution prevention, quality control, product performance, sustainable sourcing, simplified supply chain and demand production. Here, 17 sustainable development goals have been identified. So you can see that here it starts with, the, uh, let's say, SDG 1 to SDG 17. So I'm not going to talk about all that. I'm not going to mention about the SDG 17, which means that there is a, in order to take this 3D printing or additive manufacturing, IT is interconnected. So it means the people associated with, they got to work with certain indications listed here. here. I look at this additive manufacturing, data-driven methods and sustainable manufacturing. That means if we have to keep the additive manufacturing in a sustain, sustainable manner, sustainable manner, so here we had to strengthen, first of all, we had to strengthen the sustainability of additive manufacturing through data-driven approaches and workforce development. Okay, so here when the three circles are intersecting here, so what it emphasizes is data-driven sustainable additive manufacturing. So that means we have to work towards keeping it sustainable. So what is the motivation to the young mechanical engineers uh, in relation to the additive manufacturing? See the for GDP, except during the COVID, it dropped down, not only for India, but many all other countries also. But it's already recorded, it's working at about 8% or so. Okay? So let's not go into those details, but uh, this is a person, he is the Minister for Industry and Commerce. So sometime in March 3rd, 2022, he mentioned that uh, Actually, the contributors for the GDP is industry, sorry, manufacturing, agriculture, and other things. So the agriculture manufacturing alone is right now it's at 15%. So usually most of the advanced countries, they will be 25% or more than that. So the minister, commerce minister, he said that we need to the time has come that we need to increase the manufacturing sector from 15 to 25 percent. So now that we are talking with industry 4.0 and the mechanical engineers specially focused on the robotics and the uh, and also the Internet of Things and the, uh, the ready to manufacturing, I think this is the right time and this challenge has to be taken so that uh, I mean we can improve the GDP of this country. Okay, these are the contributors for the GDP, agriculture, manufacturing, construction, public administration, mining, utilities, and so on and so forth. So right now the manufacturing is at about uh, very low, uh, like about 10% uh, and it need to be increased 15%, we got to increase to 25%. So that is the motivation uh, driving this uh, additive manufacturing robotics as far as the mechanical units is concerned. What is additive manufacturing? Actually, there is a lot of confusion that ultimately the ASTM has defined the additive manufacturing uh, with a proper definition. 
and uh, most most of the times the 3d printing and additive manufacturing are interchangeable terminology so and also the, when you talk about additive manufacturing it's difficult to isolate metal additive manufacturing from those things because these are all interconnected and at the same time the when we talk about additive manufacturing it doesn't mean that we cannot dump the sub subtractive manufacturing altogether because we are not come to that stage it takes probably another 30 years 40 years or so so because the subtractive manufacturing is one thing that gives high precision to very close tolerances very good surface finish there are certain applications which require so the 3d printing as we are going to see is not going to substitute the, uh, for that those kind of uh, qualitative requirements of the products okay this is the overview of the 3d printing and additive manufacturing okay so here the part so essentially we are starting with the three dimensional modeling cad modeling then the file verification cad translator cad design then build processes the slicing just like in finite element analysis we are trying to model any uh, phenomena whether the heat transfer or a stress strain situation uh, we are going to apply some boundary conditions and we make the geometry uh, refine the elements eh, at the cost of the computing resources eh, in order to obtain the very uh, very accurate precision solution so in the same way here also when you have the slicing the each slice thickness is typically about 20 to 100 microns eh? so 100 microns is about 0.1 millimeters so the smaller the slice see it's going to meet the dimensional uh, accuracy better so if you try to choose very high tolerant high slice thickness then certain areas it may not be filling or it may be filling where you do not want also so therefore the resolution of the slicing is important the as for the ASTM definition of the additive manufacturing they have been classified into seven one is called vat photo polymerization material jetting material extrusion binder jetting powder bed fusion sheet metal lamination or sheet lamination directed energy deposition so out of these seven the four on the right hand side uh, will be for the metal additive manufacturing and the left hand side three are for the non metal parts but indirectly indirectly means so these days is when for the polymerization metal material jetting material extrusion or also uh, indirectly they are using it so let's say the wax patterns are invariably used in investment casting there's a starting point actually so what we do is that we inject the wax into the uh, die cast die into the dies and from the die we extract the wax pattern and then we cluster them around a runner riser gating system and uh, so once the additive manufacturing has been identified and came into existence and uh, it has uh, got a lot of maturity as of now so they are trying to use this uh, additive manufacturing to make the wax patterns for the uh, in, for the investment casting purposes also so indirectly they are again getting into the uh, metal parts production things like that okay so we'll try to look at this uh, binder jetting which is uh, also it's got several names like 3d printing x1 waxel jet so here what exactly is happening that liquid bonding against a liquid bonding agents are selectively applied onto the thin layers of powdered material to build up parts layer by layer the binders include organic and inorganic materials metal or ceramic powder parts are typically fired in a furnace after the they are printed for ceramics it is called firing for the metal parts it's called sintering 
the, the strength of this binder jetting is it allows uh, for color printing, especially for when you're going for the polymers. Eh? And it's got very high productivity and it uses wide range of materials. And uh, powdered, what are the materials used? Powdered plastics, metal, ceramics, glass, and sand. The second one is directed energy deposition, DED. And it has got also other synonyms, other names like uh, LMD, laser metal deposition. And the lens is very popular, that laser engineered net shaping. And the DMD, direct metal deposition, and the DM3D, and things like that. So here, essentially, the power powder or wire is fed into the melt pool, which has been generated on the surface of the part where it adheres to the underlying part or layers by using an energy source such as laser or electron beam. This is essentially a form of automated buildup welding. The electron beam is especially used when they're dealing with the very high melting point materials. And the strength of this uh, directed energy deposition process, eh, not limited by direction or the axis, and uh, effective for repairs and also for producing virgin products and uh, adding features, multiple materials in a single part. Eh, and, uh, liquids and slurries and the syringe type are the materials used, the forms. The third method is material extrusion. Here, it is a fused filament fabrication, is also known as fused deposition modeling. Material is extruded through a nozzle or orifice in tracks or beads, which are then combined into multi-layer models. Common varieties include heated thermoplastic extrusion, similar to hot glue gun and uh, syringe dispensing. The strengths of this process are inexpensive and economical. It allows for multiple colors when you're talking about the polymers. And it can be used in an office environment also. Parts have good structural properties and the materials used are mostly thermoplastic, filaments, liquids, and slurries. Material jetting is the fourth process. Eh? It's also known as polyjet and the smooth curvature printing, SCP, and the MJM, that's multi-jet modeling, multi-jet modeling project. So here, the droplets of material are deposited layer by layer to make parts Common varieties include jetting a photo curable resin and curing it with UV light, as well as jetting thermally molten materials that then solidify in ambient temperatures. The strength of this material jetting process for a high level of accuracy, allows full color parts, enables multiple materials in a single part, and smooth surface finishes are obtained. The next process is called powder bed fusion PBF. It's also known as SLS, selective laser sintering, DMLS, that is direct metal laser sintering, SLM, selective laser melting, EBM, electron beam melting, SHS, selective heat sintering, MJF, multi jet fusion. In this case, the powdered material is selectively consolidated by melting it together using a heat source, such as a laser or electron beam. The powder surrounding the consolidated part acts as support material for overhanging features. Sometimes the support materials are physically injected, like a molten wax injected, allowed to solidify, and that, that's going to act as a support material for the additive layers. The strength of this powder bed fusion high level of complexity, order acts as uh, support material, and wide range of materials can be used. Plastics, metal ceramic powders, and uh, and ceramics, I think. 
The next one is the sheet metal lamination. That is a, it's also known as LOM, that is laminated object manufacture. It's also known as STL, selective deposition lamination, and the UAM, that's ultrasonic additive manufacturing. So in this process, the sheets of materials are the stacked and the laminated together to form an object. The lamination method can be adhesive or chemical or paper plastics, ultrasonic welding or brazing metals. The strength of this sheet metal lamination are high volumetric build rates, relatively low cost non-metals, combination of metal foils and the combination of thin sheets also, including embedded components. The paper, plastic sheets, and the metal foils are, are the materials which are used for the sheet metal lamination process. The seventh one is the VAT photopolymerization. This process also has got some four different names, like SLA, that is stereolithographic apparatus, DLP, digital light processing production, 3SP, that is a scan, spin, and a selective photo cure clip that is continuous liquid interface production so in this process a vat of liquid photopolymer resin is cured through a selective via laser or protect projector which then initiates polymerization and converts the exports areas to a solid part the strength of this process is a high level of accuracy and complexity and a smooth surface finish and accommodates large build areas. Here, the materials used uh, typically are UV curable photopolymer resins. The, these are the additive manufacturing processes, but the newcomer is the hybrid additive manufacturing. Hybrid, hybrid atom, sorry, additive manufacturing is nothing but it's one of the additive manufacturing and also subtractive manufacturing procedures also incorporate. That means you'll be doing the two things. That is additive manufacturing, the layer by layer, layer by layer, you'll be building up the product. At the same time, since it requires a high precision, very accurate precision machining is involved, so very close tolerances. Therefore, we had got to resort to the subtractive manufacturing, which is the machine process. So here, the laser metal deposition is combined with CNC machining, which allows additive manufacturing and subtractive machining to be performed in a single machine so that parts can utilize the strength of both the processes. The strength of this hybrid uh, additive manufacturing is that the smooth surface finish and the high productivity, geometrical and material freedoms of DED, and the uh, automated in process support uh, removal freedom inspection. The metal powder and wire ceramics, these are the materials to, uh, which can be used for the hybrid additive manufacturing. The binder jetting, although we discussed it briefly, the, uh, this image probably will give a good insight into the process. Eh? This process and additive manufacturing that involves eh? depositing a binder selectively just like a printer head, you can see here, uh, it can move X, Y direction. And type of 3D printing process must be in a granular form and include metals, sand, and ceramics. Additionally, a binder jetting works using a roller to spread a powder material evenly on the build platform. The next step in the process is the selective deposition of the binder adhesive on the powdered material. Then the roller spreads, roller then spreads another layer of powder over the previous layer with adhesive and the process repeats until the formation of the entire object is produced. The directed energy deposition, uh, in this the method is a complex process to construct 3D objects and the material used is usually a powder or metal wire. The material melts through a fused 
through a focused energy source like a beam or a laser and is then poured precisely into the building platform. The liquid hardens to form a layer and the process repeats itself until the final phase of the product is manufactured. So here this is not limited by direction or axis and uh, effective for the for the repairs and adding features and the multiple materials in a single port highest single departure rates and the metal wire these are the items used in the material extrusion process if the process works with the aid of a glue gun the feature shoots the material into the printer through a coil, the nozzle tip melts the material with the heat and it is then placed on the build platform layer by layer to solidify and form the object. This type is the most expensive form of additive manufacturing, although with some limitations. The powder bed fusion PBF includes diverse additive manufacturing processes like direct metal laser sintering, DMLS, selective laser sintering, selective heat sintering, and uh, electron beam melting, and a direct metal laser melting. Besides, this method uses lasers, beams, or print heads to melt and fuse fine layers of material in 3D. It shoots off excess powder from the product afterwards. See, it doesn't mean that all these things are used at the same time. I mean, if uh, depending upon the requirements of the DMLS or SLS or SHS is used. So, but it accommodates all these things see, is the point. The sheet metal lamination is like a, you're stacking up uh, sheet sheets or foils see, at the stack. Then there are two main sheet lamination methods laminated object manufacturing LOM and uh, ultrasonic additive manufacturing. UAM giants thin metal sheets by ultrasonic welding, while the LOM uses adhesive coated paper sheets uh, as the original material, the best for visual and aesthetic modeling objects. The VAT photopolymerization produces an object in the vat of a liquid resin photopolymer. The photopolymerization process now cures the microfine resin layer with the help of ultraviolet lighting. Afterwards, these light rays then direct it towards the object using a mirror. So this is a kind of dedicated for the materials which got this photopolymerization sensitive materials only are used for this purpose. The material jetting method is just like a binder jetting, only that it uses wax. The operation follows a similar layering of material to create an object instead of using adhesive on the powder bed. And the material jetting deposits wax on the building platform. Most producers prefer material jetting because it is cheaper and gives high quality surface finishes with better accuracy. This is just to show that the powder bed, it means that the, the total thing is buried under the powder. The laser beam goes exactly to the places where it is the product has to be manufactured. Only those layers, as per geometrical model, it will go and melt and fuse. So these are some of the products made by additive manufacturing, like the ball wall, and this is the V-ball wall. And uh, this is a also MAM 316L, uh, stainless steel body implant. Here we have to touch upon these manufacturing systems also, if we are to really uh, elaborate the additive manufacturing process. 
Understanding the basics of manufacturing, any product can be manufactured by combination of the, uh, the below processes. For example, constant volume process, subtractive process, additive processes. It doesn't mean that uh, there is no rule that uh, any product has to be manufactured only by one particular process. Ultimately, the economy, the uh, return on investment matters, and also meeting the quality requirements is of prime importance. So the constant volume process is uh, typically like casting and forging products. So these are age-old processes. Uh, traditional processes which have really played the vital role in uh, bringing the, uh, all the technologies worldwide to this level of Industry 4.0. Uh, these are all the backbone things. But it's time now we have to change uh, to the Industry 4.0 and produce the products by additive manufacturing process. Today it may be, AM may be very expensive, but uh, the whole world, especially advanced countries like Germany, US and Japan, they are hell-bent to bring these uh, industry 4.2 and also the additive manufacturing is one of the built up thing in those uh, internet of things and uh, industry 4.2. So casting is uh, casting and forging here, there's a constant volume and this is difficult to uh, comprehend. Constant volume means it's not the molten metal volume. Uh, that means suppose a uh, thousand, thousand uh, pistons are to be produced by casting means. Eh? Thousand castings will be th thousand pistons. That's a thing actually. Okay. The forging is also the same thing. If you are doing a connecting rod forging, uh, closed by forging or whatever it is. So the the thousand kinds of forgings will give thousand thoughts. Uh, you will appreciate this once we talk about the uh, next level. Subtractive manufacturing, no doubt. I mean, without this, we, we cannot live for certain applications in the, uh, in the military and uh, the guided missiles and also the uh, well, uh, Bob Automated Research Center. The, the high precision uh, machining things are required. Eh? So the drilling, turning, milling, grinding operations come under the subtractive manufacturing, but uh, they are of very high accuracy. Uh, but low production rates compared to the constant wall. That's where, that's to make that statement, uh, we have to bring that uh, constant wall in processes actually. The thing is that the additive manufacturing process today is not in a position to meet the very close tolerances yeah, uh, of 100 micron finish or the smaller than that actually. So, but it doesn't mean that we are already at the end of the day. This is only just starting. Any process will take it to for the complete evolution, anything like 30 to 40 years actually. When we talked about the uh, electric vehicle, so it is again 30 to 40 years transition changeover. But the robotics and additive manufacturing, as for the mechanical engineers concerned, they are going to be the game changers. The yeah, coming to the additive processes, material added to the workpiece to get desired shape. Welding is the most commonly used for joining the metal parts together to fill the molten metal to build up the diameter of the shaft or cavity. For example, this all of you know, suppose every electric motor will have a shaft and it will drive some something to do work actually. So the shaft, it wears up. Its diameter gets wears out for a period of time, maybe due to the lack of lubrication or the, some sand particles dust getting it and wearing out. So nobody is going to throw the shaft actually. Uh, what they do is that they take out the shaft and clean it, and using the electric arc welding, they build the wherever that ward note is there. They will build with the electric arc welding all 360 degrees for the shaft. Then they'll put in lathe machine and simple machine, they do it and use it. Nobody's going to throw it. So that, the repair work of the shafts, eh, that already we knew it. It's something like 50 years ago itself, people have been doing it actually. So that additive manufacturing is already there. I hope you got my point. Eh? So this is of course very 
uh, it's not for you, but this slide I have actually, they're all, they're all faculty members. Uh, this is probably it's useful only when to show the students, but just for sake of let us spend half a minute. So the, here you see on the top, you got subtractive manufacturing. At the bottom, additive manufacturing. If somebody wants to produce a spherical ball, uh, so you're starting with a bigger material and machining, heap machine, machining you. We are going to waste a heap of material, okay? And uh, where is actually manufacturing? We are taking the starting material in the form of wire, let us say, and then you are, uh, either through welding process, you're building up layers. Uh, the bottom of the sphere, it's going to be like a very small dot. Then it's slowly increasing to the full diameter. Again, it's going to reduce to the uh, dot. So you're just making the product. 100% of the material is only for the product. This is hardly any wastage unless you really want to do some finished machining operation and uh, kind of thing. So this is uh, just an illustration just to uh, bring the contrast between the sub subtractive manufacturing and additive manufacturing. Birds build their nests layer by layer, additively, not by subtractive. The nature makes ice crystals layer by layer by managing heat flow, fluid flow, nucleation, growth, phase changes, and not by subtractive manufacturing. Everything is already there in the nature. This I really, after making a lot of research I mean, and literature review, I got this wonderful thing in the Google search. In 1925, somebody has taken a patent. It's on the additive manufacturing. We got to accept it. They look at this figure, the caption, 3D objects fabricated via welded deposition by Ralph and the method of making decorative articles, 1925 Google patents. So here you see this uh, flask-like thing or the basket-like thing. So he is using the welding parts. Huh? He has built the material to that particular shape. And uh, additive manufacturing, he did not say it. Uh, but uh, so it, somebody already demonstrated the processing as, as old as 1925 and things like that. Okay, this is uh, the same definition in the morning. Uh, another resource person was talking about this uh, definition from the ASTM 42. Uh, what is the additive manufacturing or 3D printing? Here, I would like to spend the one minute on this thing. See, the, those days when the additive manufacturing, all the people knew about it, uh, they were not able to do it because they never had any computer. They never had any CAD uh, softwares. And they never had an internet. Uh, they never had the uh, YouTube for the tons of information for free, technical things, certain things you can do it uh, without even uh, receiving training itself by uh, watching the YouTubes. So this kind of uh, skills, information, which you can get it freely and uh, even on payment, uh, but such uh, resources were not available. And those days in 1968, 1984, the kind of IBM computers we had, like the 386 or 486 and things like that, uh, they never had this kind of speed or this space and things like that. They never had even CAD models. Of course, CAD models, those days are there. Uh, Nesetron and Abacus and all those things are already there in the US. Uh, okay. but but not in widely used and things like that. Okay? So if in 1968, 1984, those people, if they had the, the same kind of resources what you are using, probably they must have adopted this process and got them matured by the time you came into existence into the world. Order-based additive manufacturing, that is a multi-jet fusion, direct energy, a portion. I think this I uh, already covered. Uh, I don't think it's required to be covered again. Uh, 
Okay. So yeah, purpose was probably to show the equipment, uh, select two laser sintering, uh, dollar by DTM company, currently manufactured by 3D systems, use width of power, electively use CO2, selectively use CO2 laser, uh, and to center power that can be used with the various types of materials. We never had the industrial lasers, the CO2 or YAG lasers, of 5 kilowatt, 3 kilowatt. We never had the phi axis table at all, actually. So even if somebody is given a laser in 1960, without the phi axis table, you cannot use the tool, actually. So you need the, you need to keep the workpiece and the phi axis thing and then program it so that you can do the precision welding and things like that. Okay, this also not required actually. It's kind of repetition. Yeah, but yeah, this is required probably. Yes, they download the CAD model, convert to STL, and the slice STL model, and the lower platform deposit material, create a layer, uh, simple post processes. Whatever post processing are required, uh, they can be implemented. The principle of SLS is laser traces on a bed of material powder to form cross section of a layer. And the, how the SLS works is uh, shown here actually like the laser, the mirror is deflecting the laser beam. And uh, it's moving over the power bed and this roller is uh, rolling. So these are the parameters which are going to impact the product, uh, like laser power, spot size, and the hatch spacing, and the beam speed, uh, vector length, delay between successive pulses, number of pulses, duration of a pulse, intensity of a pulse, energy stored at the surface, and things like that. Uh, laser irradiation is assumed to be uh, reflected, transmitted, absorbed according to the optical property of the material. And uh, all those things, so when you choose a material for a particular process, so their optical properties also matters uh, to be considered for efficient uh, process implementation. The absorbed energy is transformed into thermal energy through a lattice vibration material at the contact. The increase in vibration increases the temperature. Some of the absorbed energy is transferred to atoms in the workpiece, conduction heat transfer. Thermal energy may be dissipated from the surface to the environment under the influence of fluid flow convective heat transfer. Some may also be radiated uh, from the surface uh, via radiation heat transfer. The conclusion fundamental relationship is a temperature gradient within homogeneous eh? substance results an energy transfer rate within the medium. In the SLS process, the sintered regions are scanned multiple times. As a result, material properties change due to powder with properties, temperatures, and time. In current modeling, the mechanical properties of parts are expressed as a function of the applied energy density. The energy stored at the surface during the interaction period is dependent on the intensity exposure period, number of exposures, and time between exposures. Changes in geometry affect the time between scans and changes in size influence intensity, exposure period, and number of exposures. The building mechanism classification, uh, solid state sintering, chemically induced build, binding, liquid phase sintering, partial melting, uh, full melting. So what some of the concepts we already established well established in the powder metallurgy will be applied here also. This is the silica sand is uh, 
1750 degrees is a tea soft in temperature uh for pf resin is 105 to 115 degrees celsius the solid state sintering and uh, also liquid phase sintering both are used depending upon the situation the thermal process occurs at temperature between 0.5 absolute melting temperature to uh, T melt absolute melting temperature in that in that range of temperatures it is uh, processed both chemical and physical reactions occur and the uh, dominant one is dominant one is the diffusion process it involves neck formation between adjacent particles degree of sintering is determined by from d by 2r d is actually when you have the two particles overlapping uh, the contact area the length contact length and r is the radius of the particle assuming it's a spherical thing so d by 2r is going to determine the degree of the higher the d by 2r higher the degree of sintering the chemical induced bonding material is locally heat at a high temperature in short period of time and uh, disintegrates uh, like silicon carbide is disintegrated and dissociating into silicon and the carbon and uh, silicon dioxide is the SI plus O2 uh, combining to SiO2. No binder elements are added in this process. Yeah? Diffusion does not occur due to laser material interaction. Times are very short. Yeah? So for diffusion to take place is yeah? uh, not sufficient. Yeah? And uh, Liquid phase sintering, different binder and the structural material. Structural materials, metal or ceramic materials remain solid throughout the process, while a binder metal or material is liquefied and it separates the grains, composite grains, coated grains, green part produced is still porous and the brittle, so post treatment is essential. Now here the then the top left hand to the tungsten carbide cobalt powder mixture and after sintering uh, you can see the the liquid phase that penetrated into the voids the infiltration has occurred uh, if it is uh, in this case the last picture one the infiltration of the copper into the voids has uh, penetrated Metallic components, of course, are the cornerstones of modern industries such as aviation, aerospace, automobile manufacturing, energy production, military equipment, and medical implants. The stringent requirements for high performance metallic components impede the optimization of material selection and manufacturing. Sometimes it's difficult when you've got too many choices, but any single choice is not are trying to meet the uh, requirement. So laser-based additive manufacturing is a key strategic technology for technological innovation and industrial uh, sustainability. As the number of applications increase, so do the scientific and technical challenges are also increase. The, in traditional manufacturing, parts are often machined from larger blocks of material, in other words, material is subtracted from the starting block in order to form the part. Naturally, this causes a lot of waste. Uh, this is one of the big uh, uh, wire arc uh, additive manufactured uh, part. This I just got it from the uh, website. Uh, uh, it's shown here. Okay, the twenty per the, this fellow is claiming that a twenty percent higher yield strength, twice that of the traditional casting, he says. So that's a very good uh, accomplishment. So DNV is uh, into the additive manufacturing, three D printing of the large size uh, products, uh, and. Uh, Either shipbuilding industry 
increasingly discovers the advantages of additive manufacturing. DNV is working closely with the industry partners to further expand the range of 3D printed products and to move and prove their safety and functionality. Recent, recent projects illustrate the power of additive manufacturing. Of course, rapid prototyping actually. There was some, let's say in the 1980s, uh, if anybody has got a computer on his desk and also 3D uh, rapid prototyping, uh, which can print uh, using the wax, any particular CAD model, what we do, that was the highest uh, <clears throat> uh, credible mechanical engineers' uh, days, actually. That's very same rapid prototyping uh, eventually got into the 3D printing, a uh, so called IoT manufacturing. Okay. So this is historically 80 to our 2030 and how the things have developed. Uh, I wanted to skip. The AM and AM value chain consists of five steps. Number one is material and uh, system. System is usually standalone powder bed fusion systems. System providers with the low levels of vertical integration standard components usually made by contract manufacturers providers providers integrate component system and software the software is differentiation between the process control and the enhancement software process control from system uh, system pro proving add on software such as automatic support generation design automation by specialized components Replication design support for end customers can be complex and they're demanding. It's done by system providers, software developers, and our service providers. Not every service provider is able to design applications. And uh, different production scenarios like, like large OEM contract manufacturers, service providers, specialized part manufacturer, production is normally not done by AM system providers. This in the morning, the gentleman was showing this uh, hype thing. And uh, as of today, AM applications have been developed in various industries. Uh, for example, just to give some figure, consumer production in electronics, three, uh, 370 Euro millions. Eh? And for aerospace of 180, Euro millions, automotive 320 Euro millions, and tools and uh, boards about 230 Euro millions, and uh, others and medical and dental about 380 Euro millions. Uh, of the amount of money has gone into the IoT uh, manufacturing. Design complexity and the freedom, yes. Advantages uh, very quickly will go to this thing. Design complexity and freedom. The advent of 3D printing has seen a proliferation of products designed in digital environments, which involve levels of complexity that simply could not be produced physically in any other way. While this advantage has been taken up by designers and artists to impress you visual effect, it has also made a significant impact on industrial applications, whereby applications are being developed to materialize complex components that are proving to be both lighter and stronger than their predecessors. This speed, you can create complex parts within hours with limited human resources. Only machine operators needed for loading the data and the powder material, start the process, and finally for the finishing during the manufacturing process, no operator is needed. Customization, this is, is growing. This customization business is really growing. 3D printing processes allows for mass customization. The ability to personalize products according to individual needs and requirements, even within the same build chamber, the nature of 3D printing means that numerous products can be manufactured at the same time according to the end user's requirement at no additional product costs. So 18th century, the uh, custom industrial age adapted to mass 
production. That the products are manufactured in large volumes. Thousands of products are produced. But today, now we have we are moving from mass production to the mass customization because every customer has got the demand uh, product to their specific needs. So customization of products leads to high variety but very low volume production or requirements. So requirements of mass production. So this has to be the computer-based information systems like AI and deep learning, machine learning. These are the skills and the inputs are required. And also the requirements for mass customization. We also require flexi flexible manufacturing systems and also instant communication media like email, image, chat, cloud systems. So the, all these things are currently available. So therefore, the mass customization is picking up. To just to tell you that um, uh, people can just from a CAD model, they can come up and they can give the CAD geometry. You can, you can start slicing it and you can produce it. Uh, because uh, it's as simple as that it looks. So people are going for the Levis plant with the story printed on it. So it becomes easy uh, once you have this kind of uh, system in place. Tools. Now, tools are not required for industrial manufacturing. One of the most cost, time, and labor intensive stages of the product development process is the production of the tools. For low to medium volume applications, industrial 3D printing or additive manufacturing can eliminate the need for tool production and therefore the cost, lead times, and labor assisted with it associated with it. This is an extremely attractive proposition that an increasing number of manufacturers are taking advantage of this. Furthermore, because of the complexity advantages stated above, products and the components can be designed specifically to avoid assembly requirements uh, with, with intricate geometry and the complex features, further eliminating the labor and cost associated with the assembly process. Because of these advantages, Although there are this huge list of disadvantages, but because of these advantages, the driving is going towards the adopting the additive manufacturing. Another advantage is sustainable, environmental friendly. 3D printing is also emerging as an energy efficient technology that can provide environmental efficiency in terms of both the manufacturing process itself, utilizing 90% of the standard materials and therefore creating less waste, but also throughout and and additively manufactured products operating life by way of lighter and stronger design that imposes reduced carbon footprint compared with the traditionally manufactured products. The other advantage is no storage cost. I mean, the, you can, the customer can send you the, even the, what do you call, three 3D coordinates data itself so that you can directly start uh, making CAD model and uh, STL and uh, slicing and then and start manufacturing. And also there is no storage cost because the moment the order comes, you, the people are able to in a position to manufacture and supply. I mean, in the position means not immediate, may not be necessarily no, but the process offers that kind of situation. Increase employment opportunities, widespread use of ad technology will increase the demand for designers and technicians to operate the AD and create the blueprints for products. This is disadvantage. This is, I'm, I'm sorry taking for a long time, but uh, at least a few disadvantages. Whenever, uh, Dr. Kiran, you say, I will stop. Yeah, no issue, sir. Please go ahead. It's so interesting for us. Yes, yeah, so few, few of the disadvantages uh, uh, we have to, because those are the challenges, actually. The questionable accuracy. The aim is uh, primarily a prototyping technology, meaning that parts created via, via this technology are mainly test parts. As with any viable test part, eh, the dimensions have to be precise in order to, in order for engineers to get the accurate read on whether or not part is feasible. While AM has made advances in accuracy, <clears throat> in recent years, many of the plastic materials still come with an accuracy disclaimer. They say that, for instance, they will say that accuracy is plus minus 0.1 millimeters, it's about 100 microns. Yeah? But he also attaches this string that is accuracy disclaimer. That means he's not responsible for the 
accuracy what is mentioning it so this is causing but in certain areas they have accomplished the accuracy with certain confidence but when you have this kind of statements that is uh, we have to be careful the support material removal support material sometimes wax is used in so if it is small volume of support material it's not an issue but if the support material itself is as much as the product itself <clears throat> then <clears throat> removal by heat application is going to damage the product so therefore now the support materials are coming which can be leachable that means water can dissolve those things so such uh, things are coming but where such things are not possible uh, it is a problem when production volumes are small the removal of support material is usually not a big issue when the volumes are much higher it becomes an important consideration support material that is physically attached is is most concerned limitations of raw material at present the am can work with approximately 100 different raw material yeah, that is true the range of raw materials in engineering industry is thousands maybe lakhs one lakh range of materials are available let's say maybe 10000 range of but in the am of course it's it's still in the young age so what the people are saying the 100 different raw materials is not a big thing it's a very small thing that means we are we need to build available to the materials which can be used for the am is limited at the moment so that is one disadvantage at this point of time so what it means is the challenge is that more research is required to devise methods to enable am products to be more durable and robust not necessarily the type of thinking you do it but try to bring some innovation that the uh, easier materials, materials which can be easily uh, existing materials, how we can make use uh, has to be researched. Other disadvantages, considerable effort required for application, uh, design and for setting process parameters. Complex set of around 180 material process and other parameters and special design required to fully profit from the, this technology. This is why we need to have data-driven methods to keep AM sustainable. So those things we have to incorporate uh, as the more and more uh, you need to deal with and understand the more process and material-related process parameters. Material cost. Today, the cost of most materials, see, what, the moment you say it's for to manufacturing, the material cost is higher because not many people are asking for it. The, other materials which are generally used for the any automobile manufacturing, they are very less uh, expensive materials that are available. So this is why we need to tap data-driven method. Okay, today they therefore, I mean, we need to find more materials uh, so that the cost can be brought down. The other disadvantage: material properties. Yes, a limited choice of material is available. Actually, materials and their properties, for example, tensile strength, yield strength, and fatigue not much research data is coming in the papers actually have not been fully characterized also in terms of surface quality even the best rm processes need perhaps a secondary machining and polishing to each acceptable tolerance and surface finish so fatigue resistant related rotating products with variable change in stress require smooth surface finish so just ad uh, product is not really suitable for such applications but does not mean that uh, we cannot apply any secondary post-processing techniques yes we got to identify the proper cheaper post-processing process and improve the surface finish for example g has got a, a short painting uh, that is applied for the gas turbine engine turbine blades and things like that that has really increased the fatigue life uh, tremendously by incorporating compressive stresses in the surface. So we have to revisit those processes and incorporate it to these things. But already the worry is that already the cost of this AM is very high. So they are not willing to go into those already established post-processing techniques. For example, these uh, additive manufacturing process also produce some porosity and things like that, like similar to the castings. So the ready-made solution is that the hipping hot static pressing or cold static pressing but uh, but that is going to add cost to the thing so but those are all problems which can be solved over a period of time intellectual property issue yeah this is very dangerous thing 
the ease with which replicas can be created using AM technology raises issues over the intellectual property rights. For example, the availability of blueprints online free of cost any change with the, for profit organizations wanting to generate profit from this new technology. For example, just to buy a piston and uh, take the dimensions, or you can scan the, use the scanner for the dimensions, then it will give the 3D coordinate data for a complex shape product. Do these days, those kind of uh, scanners are available and they are used, they are using for the AM. So what I'm trying to say that, so piston is a, somebody's patented product actually, you buy it and they scan it and you got a complete 3D uh, CAD model with you actually. So now if, if you need only 10 pistons, why don't you make it by AM and uh, you can use it also. So the, the interest, IPR is involved. So that has to be, that's government problem, not uh, limitation of size. AM technology is currently limited by size constraints. Very large objects today we cannot produce. That is one other disadvantage at this point of time. And the cost of AM equipment, of course, other day people are talking about the two crores and three crores and things like that. The prohibit will be very high. But as I told you, these processes will take about 30 years of uh, uh, life, I mean, life before it really becomes a profitable, I mean, uh, I mean world-class process. So during that time, so many innovations will come. What we are doing today is going to become obsolete tomorrow and some new things will come up. The cost of AM equipment is very high. Okay. The other one is unchecked production of dangerous items. Yes. The Liberator, the world's first 3D printed functional gun, showed how easy it was to produce the weapons. For example, gun is one thing you cannot buy it unless uh, you apply for a license. Okay. So if I got access to a gun, I can make 3D printing of the gun and I can probably misuse it. So governments will need to devise the ways and means to check the dangerous tendency in this aspect, okay? Product cycle, okay, come on. So this is rapid prototyping, rapid manufacturing, rapid tooling, and rapid uh, sparing, and that is the uh, life cycle of the product uh, over the last years of AM technology became valid for the whole life cycle of product. Okay, yeah, this one small two examples I want to tell you, sir. The see this is uh, what the, for the A320, the yeah, conventionally designed yeah, and they produced to cast steel in a kelly hinge bracket uh, for an Airbus 320. Uh, that uh, one, if you can optimize it, this is you can definitely make by 3D printing. Uh, titanium version of the nickel hinge bracket made by additive manufacturing technology. Okay, sorry. This has been made in the titanium alloy by for E320. That's that's a message, okay? But here, this is the one I want to tell you. So for student, actually, these are the type of projects may be very attractive and uh, they will be in the top of the world, actually. Commercial aeroplanes can have up to several hundred seat belt buckles. The more example we're just talking the buckles, right? Belt buckle or seat belt buckles. So the existing buckle steel is 155 grams. Uh, if we can change to aluminum, it will be 120 grams. But uh, the with additive manufacturing process, the weight was reduced to 68 grams in titanium. So saving over the lifetime in the A380 Airbus, eh? fuel saving is uh, what? Oh my God! So many liters of fuel can be saved. And the CO2 emission is a 0.74 metric tons uh, can be avoided. Yeah? Uh, so this kind of thinking, uh, this kind of products uh, may be good for the uh, faculty student project thinking. Advantage for sport manufacturing, data exchange between development and production overnight. Yeah, this is something, you see. In the Germany, the development takes place, the manufacturing takes place in China for the for the Adi Das, okay? So, I mean, this information can be stolen without any problem, actually. Uh, for the 3D printing, 
a yeah. persons. I mean, I everything is not going to identical with everybody. So customized. Okay, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we are running out of time. Yeah, this should. Yes. Let's try. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much uh, yes. for tolerating this much time. So, okay. <laughs> You please conclude, sir. Whatever I uh, started okay. it, please conclude. Sir. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. But in the medical thing, also the uh, AM is going to be very successful because their parts are very very small, like a stent. Eh? Stent is like in a refill pen. You have a spring. You no, know? that is itself is a stent actually. So those smaller things can be made. They even hundred percent rejection is there also no problems. It's going to be so. It will enter into the uh, medical implants area easily compared to the other areas but the disadvantages are really soluble things and in the future as a mechanics instance in the last segment is the robotics and the am uh, the your finance ministry itself is telling you that we increase your production from 15 to 25 percent so you got a you know you got a green signal so you can go after these technologies and bring it to that thank you very much sir. i appreciate it. yeah thank you sir so you have covered a lot of information in that so thank you very much for that yeah. okay um any questions from the uh, participants okay meanwhile uh, i have a question sir let me ask you uh, as we all know that um, uh, 3d printing is a very uh, easy technique for uh, Printing up the complex shapes, um, but uh, as it is a metal one, uh, how can we compare the strength of the uh, metal uh, 3D printed part with the conventionally produced one, like a CNC? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question actually. See, this additive manufacturing is a casting process. So that means you will have dendritic structure and uh, non-homogeneous chemical composition, things like that. Okay, uh, all other things are raw products. For example, let's say. Any forged, rolled, uh, they are not product. Uh, their integrity is very high, a very good for fatigue applications and things like that. But at the same time, I want to tell you, for the aircraft engine, which takes about 500 passengers to the sky, so thousands of 10, 20, maybe 1 lakh planes are all the time they are in the skies, 24-7. Okay? And they use cast turbine blades, turbine wings. Okay, But the quality of the that turbine blade is engineered eh? and super alloy that's in microstructure and everything has been engineered to have that that competitive properties equivalent to that of the rod products so same thing can be applied here also so there the casting will have the shrinkage porosity and also the certain places the bonding is not good so those issues have to be uh, solved so those are those will be the research projects and yeah what i'm trying to say is that when the aircraft gas engine turbine blades and wings yeah, are as superior as the top a rod product yeah, and uh, the same thing heritage manufacturing products also one day they will have qualify they will uh, demonstrate those kind of properties but it's a long way to go because cost is coming into the picture yeah thank you sir and one more question from my sir again uh, how to address the uh, surface finish and the tolerance sir because in the C if you manufacture anything with the cnc machines like that we can achieve the very good tolerance right what about yes. this one sir is it the same case or uh, is it any different no here right now the surface quality is not good in the plastics when i'm not talking about it eh? plastics they're not for very so much here. load bearing or uh, high temperature bearing of the products yeah? So here, surface finish at, the, at this point of time, if the surface, uh, if you can machine it and use it, then no issues. But there are certain products like the turbine base and all that who wants to go for a machining, uh, which is going to be a very expensive process. That's why when investment casting, which gives you smoother surface finish, ready to use in the gas turbine engine, then why we have to go for a process and again go for the subtractive manufacturing at this point of time, we were not accepted. But uh, I don't know, but uh, 
be some people will solve some kind of time. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Any other questions from the other participants? Okay. Uh, so I think uh, no other questions from the participants, sir. Uh, uh, sir, um, uh, J Dr. J. S. Reddy, sir, I should thank you for uh, uh, sparing the time, and you have you have given a marvelous job. Lot of uh, um, uh, things you have uh, made us to know. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time and appreciate every yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye.